Hello, everyone, and welcome as we uh, come to almost the closing end of the Lusso American Education Foundation Conference, the 47th annual conference, and the theme Carnations in September with a question mark. Kravush in September as we talk about uh, freedoms, as we talk about opportunities, as we talk about identities, as we talk about cultures, as we talk about perspectives as well. And uh, this uh, session is uh, called exactly, the uh, title of it is uh, has to do with the Carnation Revolution. So the setting for this, uh, if I may take just a couple of minutes, is that for the last four days, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this morning, we've been talking about various aspects of the revolution as it affected Portugal, as it affected the United States, uh, the communities, that is, it also affected the United States because we uh, saw with Professor Daniela Melu's presentation, which is fascinating. And if you did miss it, I would invite you to it, how the Portuguese had a lot of power, got into the White House and had the ear of President Ford. And so, but also affected, of course, our communities, how different things were looked at. And uh, this is kind of a, uh, a, a, a preface to what should be a year-long commitment from the uh, Californians who are of Portuguese ancestry, whether your ancestors came from mainland Portugal, from the archipelago of Madeira, or from the archipelago of the Azores, which, as we know, in California is over 90%, but there are folks from the Madeira all throughout California as well, and a few from mainland Portugal as well as all as well and as it has been mentioned by several of our panelists the both the autonomous regions of the azores and madeira benefited immensely from the 25 de abril the autonomous process would have not been possible without the 25 de abril it was only on paper and so how do we as the community come together how do we as a diaspora in california come together and how do we commemorate this uh, landmark, truly landmark and so important and so ever-changing in so many ways for Portugal, for the diaspora, or that is the upcoming 50th commemoration of uh, the 25 de Abril or the 25th of April, the Carnation Revolution or uh, Revolução dos Cravos. I have some thoughts and uh, got some thoughts from some of our panelists as well. I uh, got some thoughts from other folks who I've worked with on projects in the Portuguese American community. These are mostly mine with a little bit of influ uh, influence from other people. So if you don't like them, it's okay. It doesn't hurt my feelings, but uh, let me share the screen with you. And uh, let me talk to you about how uh, 50 years of democracy in Portugal. How do we celebrate it here in California? Uh, and that is the topic of this session that hopefully will not take too much of your time. Uh, we'll try to keep it to about uh, 20 to 25 minutes or so. As a matter of fact, all of this will be, of course, archived, and you can always uh, pass it on to others in the community if you think there's some worthwhile information for you for your organization that you belong to, for your school, for your families, etc. So 50 years of the Carnation Revolution, o 25 de Abril, how do we celebrate it in California? First of all, a little bit again about the shared values, os valores de Abril, the legacies that were put forth with this revolution. Freedom, liberdade, no repression, no dictatorship, open discussion of ideas. We can use that a bit in our community as well. Obviously, some organizations, we were told by some people, may still run as a form of a dictatorship. Uh, let's not even have that, not just in, of course, we don't have dictatorship in the United States of America, thank God, but we don't need to have it in our organizations. We don't need any repression. We need to be more inclusive. We talked about that as well. And so it applies to us as well. And an open discussion of ideas, even though if it's not your idea, you know, um, uh, a, 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 an idea is an idea and it all should be discussed and one should look at it with uh, pragmatism, uh, with hope, of course, in changing things, with, but a, a good dose of, practi uh, of practicality is important. So we look at these open discussion of ideas that come from freedom and how they are so important, including in the Portuguese American community throughout the state of California. Peace, Bash, 
No to war, including amongst ourselves. This community is not better than the other community. This community doesn't do the best late. They're all good. They all have their own uh, type of events. This community is not um, this community organization uh, just because it's been around for 30 years is not better than the organization has been around for 18 years uh, or to the, the other way around, you know, uh, just because a community organization has been around for 100 years, maybe it needs to reinvent itself in order to fit into the 21st century. No war, including to ourselves. No colonialism. And you can say, well, there isn't any colonialism here. Unfortunately, there is. And sometimes from the Portuguese entities, the entities who visit us, especially from um, the central government, there's still a lot of colonialism. There's still a lot of looking into the ex-colonies as a colonizer. There's still a lot of ways that co colonialism, unfortunately, is still, um, is still prevalent in Portugal, the way the autonomous regions are looked. And sometimes the way the diaspora is looked with a paternalistic view, you guys should do this. And when I, uh, I hear that all the time, and now my new thing is when they, when I hear Portuguese uh, uh, authority, um, whether it be political or non-political, tell me you guys should do this. And I sometimes think it is a very good idea. Sometimes I think it's not a very good idea, but maybe we should try it. And I say, fantastic. You think, you really think we should do this? Yes, I do then can you give us the funding? Can you give us a half a million dollars so we can start this? Obviously, at that time, the with that affirmation, the conversation changes. But indeed, no to colonialism of all aspects. Cultivate peace. Cultivate peace amongst each, amongst each other, amongst our organizations, amongst our uh, families, of course. Um, and that is a strong message of the Carnation Revolution. Freedom peace, all kinds of peace, and justice. And what does justice mean for our community? Well, the same thing it means all over the world, obviously. But I would like to focus just a bit on cultural justice. In other words, the culture is not just mine. It is also my children. And it is also my grandchildren, even though they may not speak Portuguese, and they don't. Unfortunately, they don't live near us, and they and they don't have not learned the language. But they feel that they are Portuguese. They're half Portuguese, and they feel very, very um, uh, uh, proud and honored to be all of their ethnicities. And so, um, cultural justice, the. Portuguese culture belongs to everyone, whether they are immigrants or first generation, second, third, fourth, or fifth generation, whether they are 100% of Portuguese background or they're half or they're a quarter or they're an eighth. Cultural justice is very important and access to culture. Everyone should have access to the culture, whether they know the language or they don't. And culture is not just what we do on an everyday basis. Culture is not just a, a parade or a bullfight. That is culture, but culture is also literature. Culture is poetry. Culture is exhibits. Culture is in, involved in science, in technology, everything. So cultural justice, social justice. And I think our festers especially do a good job there. The meal is for everybody. And a lot of times I belong to organizations throughout the years, and we were concerned. Let's not up the tickets, you know, a lot. And we're uh, because we want to, to even those ticket, those that sold tickets. Let's not have these, you know, exuberant prices of tickets. Let's make it to where families can come, uh, to where a mom and dad can also bring their children. Um, you know, for ticket is you know thirty bucks a person, thirty five dollars a person, and maybe they can all four of them come. Maybe they can come, you know, to the event. All four of them. It's a uh, uh, you know one hundred and fifty, one hundred forty, or one hundred fifty dollars. But if the tickets are ninety five dollars a ticket, then all of a sudden they think twice before they spend four hundred dollars. Um, that was the same thing. 20 years ago when I belonged to organizations, we we struggled with going from you know 10 to 15 dollars because we wanted to make it available to everyone. Social justice, rights and responsibilities. It is easy to criticize the festers. Uh, it is very easy to say they're backward, but then you don't get involved in them. So if you want the right to criticize, get involved in it and try to change it. Um, it's the same thing with democracy. It's how it's the, it's the issue that the revolution began on. You know, the revolution began on these principles uh, in order to create a um, to create a, a a form of government 
where uh, citizens could live democratically, but responsibly as well. And Portugal faces that. Um, we cannot have just the rights if uh, uh, half or more than half of the people don't vote. And it's the same thing with the community. So, but how do we commemorate? the 50 years of the Carnation Revolution. Here are some suggestions. So first of all, making a direct correlation between our festish, it's our major cult, uh, cultural events in California. There are over a hundred festish, if you count not the Jeta Espiritu Santo, but if you count Fatima, Santo Antonio, uh, São Pedro, festas de Santos Populares, festas da Bola, all these kinds of organizations. So there's way over 100 in California. Making a direct correlation between our festas and the shared values of the Carnation Revolution. How do we do that? Kind of simple. A lot of times we have um, floor arrangements at our festas. Why not throughout the 50th uh, celebration of the Carnation Revolution that brought Portugal the opportunity to live as a democratic country, as a country, uh, as a republican form of government, a republic form of government, which is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, as we all learned this many years ago in elementary school, the symbol of the, uh, car of the revolution is the Carnation. So why not make an effort in our festas to have the carnations, the red carnations as centerpiece. Thematic borders late with the carnation, with the carnation revolution, uh, having the theme of these of these famous borders late, especially in the Central Valley, are very very popular, uh, all the way from the northern Central Valley to the southern Central Valley, also in other communities. Um, have these parades have the carnation theme, the carnation revolution. And if you need information, we'd be more than happy to furnish it through you to, to you through PBBI. Uh, a moment in honor of freedom at the religious and cultural aspects of the festas. Why not? Why not have a priest uh, at the beginning of the homily have a moment to talk about the importance of freedom, the importance uh, of the Portuguese choosing and being who they want to be. Uh, why not having a, a, a freedom moment at a bolded late, at a torada, at a festa, as uh, uh, fadu nights with musical nights focusing on the songs of April. So fadu, there has been some fadu that dealt with the, with the values, shared values of April. But there's other music, the music of, the, of Zeca Afonso, of Vitorino, and many others. Why not have musical nights focusing on the music of the revolution, the one that was prohibited and the ones that came out after the revolution. Events with national anthems can also play Grande La Vila Morena. What is Grande La Vila Morena? If you don't know, it is, and many people don't, and it's okay. It really is. Grande La Vila Morena is the song that was kind of the password song that was played on Portuguese radio in order to give the troops the go ahead. Uh, uh, for the uh, revolution, and it became kind of synonymous with the revolution because the song was prohibited under the dictatorship of, uh, or the dictatorships, because there were two of them, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Salazar and then Catano. Uh, Salazar first, many, many years, and then Catano the last six. So have the national anthems, and then afterwards, uh, even if, if it's a marching band, they can also play the tune of Grande La Vila Morena. Distribute the words. Um, have people sing them in Portuguese. They're also translated in English. Have people sing them in English. This is a way that we can connect and we can have a direct correlation between what we are already doing in our festas and the Carnation Revolution to commemorate the 50 years of uh, 25 de Abril. Heritage events, they're all over. And, uh, and they are interesting in their own way. Um, they have different levels and they achieve different people. Each heritage event can be tailored around the 25 de Abril. Sports events can have a moment, as I just said, to sing or to play Grande La Vila Morena and a clip of the revolution, even a minute and a half on those big screens, talking about Portugal became a democracy, you know, in, in, in 1974. Heritage events can have posters and temporary exhibits of the revolution, especially those, you know, that are multicultural and fairs and things like that. Have our presence our Portuguese heritage presence at county fairs, uh, focusing on the revolution. So each county has a fair. Why not make the efforts right now as fairs, you know, start thinking about 2024 to have an exhibit, even a digital exhibit on the revolution and something around it. 
uh, Portuguese soccer tournaments can have a moment in their opening session to commemorate the revolution. A heritage events can adapt for the entire year with the symbol of the carnation. So if you're going to have multiple events, your symbol can be the carnation, even if you're doing something that is not around the revolution, but it's around who we are as a people and what the people that we've become since uh, and more opportunities. Because today's Portugal, with lots of faults, and we'll talk about that in future events of PBBI, there are issues. There are issues of the, that Portugal has. Um, there are issues in Madeira and uh, the Azores, as we heard uh, in our session. If you followed, and if you didn't, you can go on to to YouTube. They'll be all up on YouTube in, in a couple of days of Joel Neto. If you understand Portuguese, if you don't put subtitles on, and it's a fascinating talk about today's Azores. So. What else can we do to commemorate the uh, schools and educational programs are, of course, a must. Develop a unit around the 25 de abri the, the, uh, of April and the, uh, and the shared, there's an A missing, values of the revolution. Have sessions with parents during the school year um, with students presenting on the revolution. Invite parents, all kinds of parents. Have a parent night at your school and where the Portuguese class is going to teach you about the revolution. Have the students do the teaching. Um, have students in Portuguese classes prepare a group presentation to present in other classes. So if you're one of the lucky 12 schools in California, public high schools that has Portuguese, focus on a presentation, a brief, 15, 20 minute presentation with clips, with music, that students are excellent at doing that. And they can go present in the social science classes, in the English classes, even in the PE classes, all kinds of classes about the Portuguese uh, revolution and how democracy that we so treasure in the United States is also treasured in Portugal. Have uh, o 25 de abril celebration at the school during the month of April. Uh, sometimes it's not easy to get the resources to do it on the 25th, but it can be celebrated any time during the month of April. Portuguese club on these campuses can celebrate with a monthly event, a different event every single month, starting in January. January, February, March, April, May. Then June, of course, comes graduations, but January, February, March, April, and May, that's five different events that then can be recycled and done a bit different when school starts all over again in, uh, in August. It can be, these, some of these events can be done in September, October, and November as well, because the idea is to commemorate 25 de abril for an entire year. Portuguese halls and community organizations can publish a pamphlet um, and have a liaison that can go to schools. So if you don't have a Portuguese school, you know, but you have a Portuguese hall, come up with an ad hoc committee and we can even meet through Zoom and we can give you information through PBBI where you can publish a pamphlet, you know, for uh, at, at one of the publishing companies or even someone at home can do it on their computer if they have a, a good printer, where it has some basic information and you can go make a presentation on behalf of your Portuguese organization, your hall or your social club or your civic club to schools, not just schools that teach Portuguese, any school to talk about freedom and and make a correlation between the freedom that Portugal got 50 years ago and the freedoms that we have here in the United States of America. Of course, fraternal organizations and statewide organizations have a big role in this. Indeed, they do. So there are conventions. They usually have quite a few hundred people. Why not dedicate a portion of the conventions of both the uh, Luso Financial and the PFSA to the 25 de Abril? Uh, I think you owe it to your members, and I think we owe it all to the community. Even if it's a simple presentation of 10 minutes, even if it's putting songs here and there, um, all the different events, try to have a, a portion of it dedicated to the democracy uh, of Portugal that brought the freedom to our country of origin of where we were born, as my case, or your parents or your grandparents, or your great-grandparents, or even your great-great-grandparents. Have a lecture, a presentation on the shared values of the revolution at these conventions. Have a display with posters and artifacts of the transition to democracy in Portugal. Create a call for projects to fund that are educational around the 25 de Abril. 
our fraternal societies have some funding and that's great. And, and they can fund some projects that could be then disseminated throughout technology, the world of technology and have segments on the history of the revolution on your bulletins. I know a lot of our organizations have bulletins and newsletters. Why not dedicate, if you have a monthly newsletter, then dedicate a portion of it, of, even if it's just a small paragraph or two about the Carnation Revolution for the entire year of 2024. If you have a magazine, like some of our fraternal societies, that's quarterly, publish a page or two, dedicate a couple of pages to the 25 de Abril uh, Revolution uh, to pass on that information. And of course, 50 years of Carnation Revolution, Portugal and the autonomous regions of the Azores and Madeira. So the diaspora, the Portuguese community can, if we so choose, take this opportunity to bring forth politely, politely, but forcefully, some of the issues we have faced and have never been resolved. So as I mentioned, when the Portuguese authority or anyone representing Portugal says, you should do this, say, that is a great idea, if you believe that is a great idea. If you don't think it's a great idea, tell them not. Be, 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 be truthful. It's not a great idea. And why isn't it a great idea? Because I know the community. I know the community I live in. We need this, this, and this, and that. And we, if we need what you're saying, if it's something that you feel you do need, but it has to be tailored to our community, then tell them about it. And if you think it's a great idea, but you think it's something that knowing your community that you cannot fund, say, sure, but this costs $100,000. Can you give me the funding from Portugal? Because indeed, I don't think that we should be funded by Portugal, but I think if... Portugal wants to be have an authoritarian kind of, of, a, of a take on the communities, then as we say in Portuguese or in English, put your money where your mouth is. Remind the national governments in Portugal, I've been doing this all my life and haven't been too successful, but maybe some of you can, that colonialism has ended and that the future of the diaspora depends on the diaspora and not on Portugal interjecting any of its uh, tendencies from the authoritarian past into diaspora affairs. Be firm about that. It's our community, it's our future. We want Portugal's help. We want Portugal as a partner, not as a boss. And call upon the government officials to give our diaspora the resources that the resources deserve in order to carry out a dignified celebration without intervention. Our creativity, but give us some resources that we can then adapt to the things that we need to put forth here in our community. Portuguese American elected officials. So we have 140 plus in California. We have congressmen, we have uh, state representatives, state assembly and senators. We have lots of, uh, of, the, of uh, throughout the state uh, in um, board of supervisors at the county level, municipal level at the city halls, in water boards, in, elect in education boards, et cetera. It is time that these folks, if they are a Portuguese background, to step up and do something for the community. Build through the California Portuguese American Coalition, because the California Portuguese American Coalition is a network that reaches some of these, most of these folks, a task force that will reach out to our counties throughout the state, all 58 of them if possible, to have resolutions commemorating Portugal's 50th anniversary of transitioning into freedom. So we were successful, the California Portuguese American Coalition, I should say, in having, I think, a half a dozen counties and a couple of cities do something for Dia de Portugal. But this is significant. This is the 50 years of, of democracy, something that, the, that we in America preach all over the world, as we should, because it's the best form of government. And so Portugal has one. Not perfect, but neither is ours, and neither is a lot of them throughout the world. It's a process. Democracy is not a given. It's a process, and it could be messy. But, but indeed, indeed, um, I believe it would be great to have the majority of the counties in California we are now in 500 cities, so every county has Portuguese, even if it's just, and I have those numbers, and we will be talking about them shortly through a program through PVBI, but if every county has, even if a county has uh, a thousand Portuguese people, okay, if we can motivate, we only need to motivate about two or three to contact their supervisor, and we will have a template for you, and have the counties in California do a resolution to commemorate 
democracy in Portugal. Create a task force to call upon our Portuguese American congressmen. Uh, congressmen, we have four from California and we have four congresspeople because we have one congresswoman from the East Coast. But we're talking about California. We have four of them to make, have a similar resolution in the U.S. Congress and actually transmitted lives through uh, C-SPAN where all of us can you know, bring that to our communities through social media and even an event in Washington um, in the U.S. Congress that if people want to attend, they can. Have an online forums with elected officials of Portuguese ancestry to discuss our political climate here in the United States and compare and contrast with shared values of the revolution in Portugal. PBBI at Fresno State, because I said, put your money where your mouth is. I said that earlier. PBBI at Fresno State has commitments to a year-long series of events online and in person that will look at celebrating and reflecting on the 25 de Abril on the Carnation Revolution. These events will focus on our community um, from the accomplishments that we have had, many accomplishments, to some of the challenges that we've talked about during this conference, from politics to education, from the Portuguese LGBTQI community to older generations, from the right to learn the Portuguese language to the issues facing today's Portugal. We're going to be committed to having a series of events and most of our events in one way or another in 2024 will be tied to the 25 de Abril and the Carnation Revolution, whether it be in literature, whether it be in the art and other form of arts, whether it be in political world, whether it be in community affairs, education, etc. We have also are committed to having a Portuguese language student day, which we've had in the past from high schools that have uh, uh, Portuguese programs throughout Central California if they want to attend, and it will be focused on the revolution. It will be focused on giving the students the opportunity actually to kind of participate in a way. So we're going to have to be creative with our partners and our colleagues who are very creative at the high school level and come up with a very interesting day at Fresno State in April of 2024. Publications. We are committed to putting forth print and digital of translations into English of works related to the Carnation Revolution. We'd like to put at least one together that is print that folks could have, could purchase, and digital, a lot of different things that folks can access to get that information. Work with, if they so choose, of course, Portuguese language elementary and high school teachers on lessons related to the Carnation Revolution, including the community aspect. So I'm more than willing. And so are, are the historians and so are those who work with me at Fresno State to put forth uh, a couple of sessions a couple of workshops where teachers of Portuguese can come to the university and we can take a full day or a morning or an afternoon and hash this out together and come up with some lessons that are related to the Carnation Revolution and relevant to our Portuguese American experience. So, Carnations in September, Cravos in September, Freedoms, Legacies, Identities, Cultures, Opportunities, how can we commemorate? There's a laundry list there uh, um, that we can we can certainly uh, collaborate all together throughout the state of California and commemorate com dignidade, as we say in Portuguese, liberdades, legados, identidades, culturas e oportunidades. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for being part at one o'clock uh, here in about 15 minutes for those of you uh, here in the, in the West Coast. At four o'clock for those of you in the East Coast, we will have our closing uh, event. And our closing event will be a bit different than in the past. Uh, and it will take probably about uh, 15 or 20 minutes, but we hope all of you can join us. Our closing session will be at one o'clock. Take care, everyone. And uh, we'll see you back here with uh, at one o'clock with another uh, closing session, our final session of uh, the 47th annual Luso American Education Foundation Conference uh, that was organized today, this year, not just today, but the last few uh, days as well. It was organized, uh, of course, um, through the uh, PBBI, the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute at Fresno State. There was a wonderful question by Dr. David Ross, our good friend. Do you plan to screen cinema and old uh, newsreel footage 
uh, and um, uh, including the documentary as as the one the great one from BBC uh, next year. Yes, we do. So we're we're planning on having also nights or evenings or events. Some of them online, but some of them there at Fresno State in person, where we will have uh, some some documentaries and some films around the Carnation Revolution that have been done. Thank you so much for that question. That is one of our plans. Thank you so much, Dr. David Ross. And thank you all for joining us. And once again, we'll be back here at one o'clock with our closing uh, session of the of the Portuguese Beyond Borders Institute at Fresno State hosting the Luso American Education Foundation Conference. Thank you all and take care. We'll see you soon.